Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's a privilege to be on this platform again. Word of grace. I want to thank God for your life. I want to thank God for what God has been doing. I believe your day has been wonderful. And I know that again tonight, the Lord's hands of grace will reach you wherever you are in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your doings in our lives. We thank you for this platform where we have access to the word of grace. Great Holy Spirit will worship your holy name. Tonight, I ask that you will speak directly to every mind. The word of grace, the word that encourages, the word that builds up. Thank you, Father. We receive your understanding, we receive strength. By the reason of this word, our lives will not remain the same. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. So I want to welcome you again on this platform, the Word of Grace. We always come up on this platform by the grace of God every Friday, 7 p.m. Nigerian time. And uh, tonight, I really want to share with you what is in continuation with what we have been looking at. Last week, I was talking about the Word of God as a critical source of answers from heaven. The life of men generally in the world is filled with all kinds of questions. We live in a world of questions. Most of these questions are incredible, and most of these questions actually define the life of and the experiences of many people in the world. You see people in different parts of the world with questions in their life. Some, when they open up to you with the questions of their life, you will shake your head. And a lot have been in this condition of many questions without answers for many years. But we have answers from heaven. And uh, I told you on this platform that the first place to get an answer is to get an answer in God. God is the source of every answer that can quench your thirst and satisfy your curiosity. And uh, is the source of every answer because of who he is and because of what he can do. Apart from God, we began to look at some other sources of answer. One, that are connected to God. And then two, that can give anyone with questions lasting answers. Without necessarily becoming a victim of the devil's attack, without becoming a victim of the devil's assault. And we started looking at the word of God last week as a critical source of answer. And I like to tell you again and again that the Word of God is a critical source of answers. Whatever may be the questions in your life and the questions of life agitating you, the Word of God is a critical source of answers. The Bible is essentially the book of God's answers. And it, the tragedy of a closed Bible is a life that is full of questions without answer. The tragedy of a closed Bible is a life that is being described by the questions. And a lot of people in a bit to find answers to the questions of their life have engaged the services of the devil and the services of demonic spirit. We have too many agents of the devil in the name of false prophets in our days, connecting people to the devil, connecting people to strange spirits, all in a bit to get answers to the questions of their life. But the good news is that the word of God is a critical source of answer. I showed this last week. But today, I'm still going to stay with the word of God. But today, I want to talk about the superiority of the word of God. As a critical source of answer, the superiority of the word of God. We live in a generation of increased knowledge. We live in a generation of information. We live in a generation of many revelations, teachings, prophecies, and visions. Many books have been written and many books have been published and many more are still on the way. Although our generation is fast losing the culture of consistent reading and discipline study, however, there are still many believers who are reading wide and who are studying diligently. Such believers must be very careful to ensure that what they are reading aligns with the truth revealed in the scriptures. The word of God which contains answers from heaven, qualitative answers, accurate answers to every question of life. 
it is important for you to be grounded in the truth of the scripture so that you can know when a book is wrong and when a book is right. If you don't know what the Bible says, you will never know the right books to read and then the right information to gather. Let me say this, that the first 10 years after my conversion, I spent those years completely devoted to reading and studying the Bible. In the first 10 years after my conversion, I never read any book. I was not even interested in just gathering books. I just stayed with the Bible. I, nobody taught me about that. I believe it was the Holy Spirit because I didn't have the privilege of somebody teaching me details about what to do, what not to do. But I believe it was the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And for me, it's become a pattern. For many people that I've had to share the word of God with, I always advise that you don't just go to buy books, seeking for information, seeking for answers. Get down with the word of God. So the first 10 years after my conversion, I didn't buy any book. I stayed with the Bible. Read it line by line, read it page to page, grant it, understand the truth of the word of God. I study the Bible so that I can understand the revelations and know his truth so well, so that I could discern error and I could discern wrong doctrine easily. Because wrong doctrine will connect you to wrong answers. And wrong answers will color your life wrongly. And when your life is colored in the negative direction, you are heading for a negative destination. Most of the answers that we get from books that do not align with the truth of the scriptures are answers that will make you become a victim of the devil, answers that will connect you to strange spirits, and answers that will make you a perpetual slave of Satan. There is no free gift from the devil, and it's important for you to know that. So in trying to get information from books, you must stay with the word of God first and foremost, understand the revelations of the scripture, know the position of the Bible concerning every issue of life, know the points the Bible is making concerning every question of life, then you will be able to know which book is right, which book is wrong. This is very, very important. When your knowledge of the truth is not deep and thorough, you will be a victim of every changing wind of doctrine that is rooted in human cunning craftiness and aimed at leading men into error and damnable heresies. In Ephesians chapter four, I read verse 14. Ephesians chapter four, verse 14. The Bible says that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Beloved, there is only one version of the truth, which is the Bible. It's the book of answers. It's the only book that contains the right answer. Every other book that could be helpful to you was actually aligned with the truth of the scripture. But there are several versions of lies and there are several wrong doctrines. So it is wisdom to know the truth so well so that errors and heresies can be identified from a distance. Every other book written by men that is not rooted and is not in alignment with scriptural revelations, but claiming to have answers as satanic, poisonous, and deceptive. So also every message, every teaching, every prophecy, and every vision that does not align with the truth of the scripture cannot have answers for your life. They will rather complicate the question of your life and make you be a perpetual victim of satanic attack. In Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20, the Bible says, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. If they speak not according to this word, in this case, if they speak not in alignment with the truth of the scripture, it is because there is no light in them. And if there is no light in them, they cannot carry the answer that will take care of your future. So it's important that we know that. In Jeremiah chapter 23, Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 28 and 29. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 28 and 29. The Bible says, the prophet that had a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, 
Let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? It's very important. Every believer should subject his personal curiosity to the control of the truth revealed in the scriptures. Every curiosity in your mind about any area of life and eternity that is not satisfied by the truth, that is, by the answers already provided for in the Bible, is a curiosity from the devil. You must be delivered from such curiosity. You don't need the answer that the Bible is not supplying. Beloved, the road to deception is open when you always look for something more than the Bible. Be very careful of the so-called extra biblical studies and so-called revelations, especially that does not validate the written word of God or that is not validated by the written word of God. This is always the beginning of errors and it's always the beginning of false doctrine. And false doctrine will connect you to a wrong answer. And the wrong answer will take you to a wrong destination. And the wrong destination will jeopardize the promise and the program of God in your life. It is very important. The danger of error and false doctrine is that they are swift in spreading and generational in damages. Many people, especially in the church, that are zealous but very gullible. We have too many of our people today, very zealous but very gullible, very innocent but very naive, very passionate but very proud, very hungry for God but empty of the truth. And a lot of them in our day have fallen victim of false doctrine and they have entered the trap of deception. It is wrong, it is terrible, it is tragic to be driven by a wrong answer. It complicates the questions of life. So the word of God is superior because it contains the answers from heaven. No matter the question of your life, no matter the complication you have experienced before you encounter the word of God, the word of God brings you answers that bring simplifications to your life and destiny. It brings light, it clears the road for you, and then it gets you to know what you should be doing to escape and to solve the questions of life. Not only will you be free from the questions of life, you will be free from the bondage of the devil. You will be free from the joke of the devil. You will get answers as a free man, not that you will get so-called answer as a perpetual slave to the devil. So the word of God is superior. The superiority of the word of God must be clear to you, must be embraced by everybody, every believer. And every time anything you are doing must be subject to the revelations of that superior book, which is the Bible. Due to the accuracy and the incomparableness of the nature of answers from heaven scattered throughout scriptures, you must ensure your personal spiritual safety by considering the scripture as superior, number one, to human reason. The word of God is superior to your reason. That's the first thing you must know. The word of God is superior to human reason. Your human reason must never take the place of absolute authority over your life. While it is true that God gave you your mind and your desires to use them, yet you can only find safe answers in life when you place your human reason under the absolute authority of the word of God. Don't let your human reason contradict the revelations of the word of God. Don't let your human reasons invalidate the revelations of the truth. It is important. The Bible is superior to your human reason. On any matter, in all situations, at all times, and with everybody, let your human reason be subjected to the, to the supreme authority of the word of God for thorough education of your perspective. Many times, the answers that God will work with will clearly contradict the reason of your mind. So your mind cannot contain God. You will need an open mind submitted to the authority of the scripture to get the correct answer per season, per time. Because many times the answers that God is going to work with is against your reason. So if you follow reason, you will miss God. If you follow your reason, you will miss the answers of God. 
but follow the word of God. Submit your reason to the control of the Bible. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 58, chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. I didn't say so, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. In the New Testament, it's easier for us to know the ways of God. It's easier for us to know the thoughts of God. The thoughts of God and the ways of God are packaged for us in the Bible. You don't need to go to anywhere, go to, go to Lagos, go to London, go to America, go to Asia, go to Australia to get the thoughts of God, go to one mountain to get the ways of God. No, the New Testament is simplified because the thoughts of God are packaged in the book of answers, which is the Bible. The ways of God are packaged in the book of answers, which is the Bible. That's why I said the tragedy of a closed Bible is a life that is devoid of answers. The tragedy of a closed Bible is a life that will be filled with complicated questions. It's important for you to know that. So if you're going to get the thoughts of God, you must open the Bible. You must read the Bible. If you are going to get the ways of God, you must open the Bible. You must read the Bible. And you must accept that the word of God is superior to your human reason. I want you to meditate on the practical wisdom of Proverbs chapter 3, from verse 1 to 8. So as not to become a victim of the futility and unreliability of human reason. So I'm going to read from Proverbs chapter 3, from verse 1 to 8. The Bible says, my son. Forget not my law. Don't forget the Bible. To forget the Bible is to forget the answers that will bring solutions to the questions of your life. But let thy heart keep my commandment for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Can you ever ask for more? Length of days, long life, and peace. Did you see that? That's what you find when you keep an open Bible shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thy heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Wow. You find favor. The Bible is the book of favor. The Bible shows you the road to favor and good understanding, both in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Don't let your human reason be more superior to you than the word of God. Let the word of God be more superior, be superior to your reason as a human being. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. He shall be held to thy neighbor and marrow to thy God. Number two, the word of God is superior to the church. The word of God is superior to the church. Don't forget, I'm talking about the superiority of the word of God. That's the book of answers. Many people believe that answers are in the church. Yes, but the word of God is superior, not just to human reason, also to the church. As important as the church is in your life as a believer, Yet, the authority of the word of God must be higher than that of the church. You can have peace of mind to receive instructions for life answers from your church only if your church is in line with the word of God. I know churches in our days that complicate the questions of the life of many people. I know churches in our days that are satanic centers and demonic networks that connect people to wrong answers, that take people to wrong destinations and complicate the life of many people. So the church is not superior to the word of God as an agency for answer. The word of God is superior to the church. You can only receive correct answers in your church when your church is in line with the word of God. When, wherever the authority or instructions of your church is in conflict with the word of God, your safety and life answers are not guaranteed. 
except you go with the word of God. And it is not out of place to know that there are many churches today that are clearly in violation of the word of God. There are many churches today whose preachings and practices are in clear violations of the truth of the word of God. Such churches cannot connect you to answers that will remove the complications of your life. Such churches will only connect you to questions that will complicate your life and that will take you to, the, to, wrong, to a wrong place in eternity. It is very, very important. Churches should be a place of salvation, but only churches that are in line with the word of God that can be a place of salvation. Otherwise, most churches today are slaughter slab of the devil, connecting people to wrong spirit and taking people to wrong destination. It is very, very important. Sometimes, even those local churches mentioned in the Bible itself were graciously wrong. And some churches in our days are in glaring error. The following description of the New Testament churches, some of which were started by Paul the Apostle himself, reveal that it is possible for the church to be in error, but the word of God cannot be in error. Very, very important. You must begin to judge the preachings, the messages of your church, the mission of your church, and the practices of your church with the revelations of the truth in the Bible to know either your church is going to connect you to the correct answers or your church is going to complicate the questions of your life. So there are other churches in the Bible that are wrong, especially churches that are founded by Paul the Apostle. Let me give you examples. The church in Ephesus, the church in Ephesus, 30 years after Paul founded that church, they went into error. Serious contradiction to the scripture. They became a center that connects people to the devil. No longer God. They left the righteous path. They departed from their first law. Hear what the Bible says about them. Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Nevertheless, I have sought against thee. Because thou hast left thy first law. You have left your romance with the truth. You have left your love for the revelations of the word of God. You are in contradictions with the truth of the Bible. You have left your first law. Remember, therefore, on whence thou falling and repent. Churches can fall when they do not align with the word of God. So the word of God is superior to your church, whatever may be the name of your church. The word of God is superior. You must know that the word of God is superior to that church. The Bible says, remember where thou art fallen and repent and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove the candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. The church in Pagamos, in Revelation chapter 2, verses 14 to 16. Revelation chapter 2, verses 14 to 16. The Bible says, But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Then there is the church in Tiatera. The church in Tiatera, Revelation chapter 2, verse 20 to 23. Revelation chapter 2, verse 20 to 23. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of, of her fornication. And she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he, which searches the reins and heart. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. There are churches like this today. So to say that your church is superior and that even if your church is operationally in contradiction with the word of God, that your church is superior is to embrace wrong answers, is to complicate the questions of your life. The word of God is superior. The church is Sadis. The church is Sadis. Revelation chapter 3, verses 1, 2, and 3. And unto the angel of the church is Sadis, write, 
This thing said he that had the seven spirit of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou art a name, that thou livest, and are dead, that are churches like that. They have a semblance of a living church. They have a posture of a living church. They have activities of a living church. But spiritually and essentially, they are dead. The presence of God is not there. Their preaching and practices are in clear violation of the truth of the word of God. Such churches can connect you to answers. And that's why you must be looking beyond church to look at the truth of the word of God. The Bible says, I know thy works, that thou hast a name that thou livest and art there. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and had and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come on thee. And finally, the Laodicean church. The Laodicean church. Out of the seven churches that Bible that, that, that were spoken about in the book of Revelation, five of them were in error, glaring error. And it takes the truth of the word of God to expose their error. That's why the word of God is superior. I wouldn't be surprised today that out of every five churches in these last days, out of every seven churches in our day, in these last days, five of them will be in glaring error. How many percentage of churches that are in error, in, in, I mean, in light of that calculation, you will discover that you need the word of God to know a correct church and a wrong church. Otherwise, there will be too many complications in your life that your entire life will be used to salvage problems instead of pursuing God's purpose for your life. In the church in Laodicea, Revelation chapter 3, verse 15 to 19, the Bible says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. That's the situation of some churches, not cold or hot. I would that thou were cold or hot, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Churches with sophisticated cathedrals, but God has spewed them out of his mouth. Because thou seest I am rich. That's the problem of the last days. The Laodicean church is a prophetic revelation of the churches of the last days. I am rich. The church of the last day is a rich church, but rich physically and terrible, terribly poor spiritually. Rich in money, but poor in the truth of the word of God. That's the greater percentage of the churches we have in the last days. In different parts of the world, because thou seest I am rich and increased with good and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and announce thy eyes which I saw that thou mayest see as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten be zealous therefore. And repent. The word of God is superior to the traditions. The word of God is superior to human reason, it's superior to the church, it's superior to traditions. The word of God must be in a place of highest authority in your life as a believer if you are going to connect to right answers. The word of God must be in a place of highest authority in your life above traditions and customs. There are many questions of life thrown up by the traditions and customs of men that only the word of God have answers for. Don't ever come under the influence and control of any tradition and customs of men that does not line up with the word of God. Don't ever, don't let any tradition take your submission, especially traditions and customs that does not line up with the truth of the word of God. Obviously, there are some African traditions that agree with the word of God, such as respect for elders and respect for everybody. Dignity of labor is encoded in African tradition, and that agrees with the word of God. Hard work, you know, good morals, and chastity. Let your obedience be out of your understanding of the word of God and not out of the mindset of an African man keeping his customs and traditions. It's okay to have some part of African traditions and some part of your culture and traditions that submit to the authority of the word of God. But it is not okay to have a part of your traditions that is in contradictions to the word of God. At such situation, you go with the word of God 
and you jettison your tradition, if you will ever find answers from heaven to solve all the problems in your life. Let me give this counsel, especially for African people, don't obey God as an African man. Don't obey God as a European man. Don't obey God as an Asian man. Don't obey God as a native of the earth. But be an African man that is a kingdom citizen. Be an Asian man that is a kingdom citizen. Be a European that is a kingdom citizen. Your kingdom citizenship must be critical in your mind than your nativity in the world. That's where you find correct answers. Otherwise, the customs and traditions that you hold on to will complicate the questions in your life seriously. So in any area of conflict of traditions with the word of God, the word of God is your highest authority. In Matthew chapter 15, the Bible says from verse one to six, then came Jesus to scribes, then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem saying, why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread, but he answered and said to them, why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that cursed father or mother, let him die the dead. For ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or mother, he shall be free. Thus ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, the Bible says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men. Take note of that. After the traditions of men and not after Christ, after the traditions of men, after the rudiment of the world, and not after Christ. So, the tradition that does not submit to the revelation of the word of God must be discarded. The tradition that does not submit to the revelation of the word of God will complicate the questions of life in your life, will lead you to the wrong destination, will disconnect you from answers from heaven. So, you must know that the word of God is superior to traditions. Let me take the last one as we pray today. The word of God is superior to servants of God. The word of God is superior to human reason. The word of God is superior to the church. The word of God is superior to traditions. Finally, the word of God is superior to servants of God. You must know the difference between the word of God and servants of God. The word of God is superior to servants of God. In clear terms, the word of God is superior to pastors. The word of God is superior to evangelists. The word of God is superior to bishops, to apostles, to senior prophets. Whatever may be the title, whatever may be the ministry, whatever may be the nomenclature of any calling, the word of God is superior. You are going to get a lot of wrong answers when you appreciate servants of God more than you appreciate the word of God. A lot of people have become permanent slaves of the devil because they don't know the difference between the servants of God and the word of God. They think that the servants of God are superior to the word of God. So they follow the servants of God foolishly, dogmatically, in violation, most of the truth of the word of God. They get their finger burned and they get themselves in serious complication. But let me say to you today that the word of God is superior to the servants of God. Servants of God, most especially your pastor, has a legitimate scriptural and spiritual authority over you, but that authority remains viable only if it is in line with the highest authority of the word of God. Wherever any pastoral authority conflicts with the word of God, follow the word of God. Did you hear that? Follow the word of God. This is because even the godliest pastors are, are after all, finite men that are fully capable of the vilest sin, except for the grace of God. Your pastors hold over you is legitimate if he is in the Bible. So follow your pastor as long as your pastor follows the Bible. Follows that senior apostle as long as that senior apostle follows the Bible. If that senior apostle stop following the Bible, stop following that senior apostle, you'll get yourself into serious problems. Follow that prophet as long as that prophet is practicing the scripture. 
If that prophet is no longer practicing the scripture, he's into mystical and philosophical things, he will connect you to strange spirits and it will complicate your life. Don't let the title of a man of God intimidate you. Search for the integrity that he has with the word of God. This is what will open your life to millions of answers from heaven that will take you to God's purpose for your life. It is very, very important. Most people have begin, began to idolize their pastor and they are going to hellfire with some of their pastors because the word of God has been in violation in the lives of these pastors. So it's important you know where you stand and where you are going. Disobeying and refusing to follow the pastor that is in the Bible is refusing and rejecting critical answer from heaven that is meant to lift you up in life. So if you don't follow a pastor that is following the Bible, you are throwing away answers that God has ordained to lift you up in life. So your safety in life is not guaranteed. As you become a danger to yourself, you become a danger to everybody under your influence, and you become an endangered species. However, disobeying and refusing to follow the pastor that is not in the Bible is a duty you are obligated to perform. Any pastor, any prophet, any apostle, any bishop that is not in the Bible, you have a duty to disobey them. You have a duty to stop following them. You have a duty to reject their influence over your life. It's a duty. It does not amount to rebellion when you reject the authority of a pastor who have refused to submit to the authority of the scriptures, either in his life or in his ministry. As I land up today, beloved, you will never have problems locating answers from heaven. Answers that will silence all the questions of life and answers that will silence all the questions in your life if you embrace the superiority of the word of God. I want to pray for you tonight that you will register it permanently in your heart that the word of God, which is the Bible, as a critical source of answer is superior to any other thing in this world. It's superior to your human reason is superior to the church, is superior to tradition, is superior to servants of God. I pray for you that you will not miss your steps. Yeah. You will not miss your way in life. Yeah. You will not get into complications. You will connect to answers from heaven through the word of God that will put an end to all the questions of life and put an end to all the questions in your life. You will disgrace the questions of life by the answers from the Bible. In the name of Jesus. May you not be a permanent victim of the devil. May you be free to do what God has ordained you to do. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, I thank you tonight. Give you all the glory and honor for the word of grace that has come again. I ask, O oh Lord, that our estimation from, for the word of God will begin to increase by the reason of this truth. We will love your word with passion. We will read the Bible purposefully. We will study it diligently and we will obey it completely. Lord, I thank you. We give you praise, we give you glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. It's been a pleasure tonight sharing fellowship with you on this platform, the Word of Grace. And like I tell you, every Friday, 7 p.m. Nigerian time, the Word of Grace comes up. Wherever you are connecting from all over the world, I hand you over to the peace of God and the grace of God, which is able to keep you. And I pray that next week Friday, we'll be here again to share fellowship on this platform. It is well with you, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. See you next week Friday.